When it comes to timing this 1986 Chevrolet Corvette with the L98 cast iron heads automatic is uh, there's a couple of key things you need to know to get the timing correctly set and one of the things you need to know for sure is if your car is an automatic or if it's a manual and This right here this right here is the information that you need to time your car correctly. Um, this one is an automatic. So right here it says it's an automatic. And uh, it needs to be six degrees in drive while it's idling. It needs to be in drive. And this one is six degrees in neutral. See those right there? Okay, so when you're doing a timing on this, the car has to be in gear in drive. The wheels must be spinning or they must be blocked when you're uh, when they're in the air. Mine are in the air right now so mine were spinning when I set my timing. See that connector right there? Right here? That needs to be unplugged. Disconnect your EST connection back here. It's the thing right there with that's not plugged in. Go ahead and hook up your timing light lead here to the number one plug. And go ahead and hook up your timing light here and here. And then when we check it with the timing light going, There's the gauge we're reading down there on by the balancer. It's got numbers on it. See that little M-shaped gauge? It's got numbers on it, and those are the numbers you read to get the correct timing. Turning the distributor cap back and forth is what adjusts the timing. One more thing. A helpful hint when you're getting the motor to start running again after sticking the... Uh, the distributor in. One more hint um, is when when the car is starting to come back to life, this is turned a lot more farther counterclockwise than you would think it'd be. Right now it's set timing the set right here where it's supposed to be. But to get the car started, this distributor had to be man, it was turned real far counterclockwise than it is right now. Um, just to get it to light. And once, I, once it started firing up, then I went ahead and went to the cruise control servo right here, pulled this little thing back, and then you pull this, and that actually actuates the throttle. See how that's moving back and forth? That's just by pulling this right here. So you don't have to have stretch Armstrong arms to reach over there and give the throttle while you're reaching in here and turning the key. So that's just another little helpful hint on um, getting this car started.